Hello, welcome back for another chapter of Broken Twigs Farewell to Fairy Forest, written by Charlotte Taylor and illustrated by Kezia Crossley. Now I'm afraid at the end of chapter six things aren't looking great at all for Twigs. She's been banished and unfortunately her wings have also been removed by her queen. I'm holding out some hope for her. But chapter seven is called The Enemy Comes Calling so it doesn't sound great. I'm still quite excited to find out what happens. I hope you are too. Meanwhile, on the outskirts of Fairy Forest, something was amiss. Distracted by the fire, guard fairies had left their sentry posts to help with the evacuation of the community and then had been instrumental in helping to organise the homeless and the hurt. Leaving their boundaries unprotected, they gave no thought to any potential threat from the outside. And it was this breach in security that the enemy had patiently been waiting for. In the gloominess of the evening light, and with the last of the dust clouds still lingering, movements between the trees alerted only the most attentive of creatures that danger lurked nearby. A lone squirrel, hopping from branch to branch on its way back to its dray, felt the tree underneath it move in a most unusual way, and it froze in alarm. Within moments, a snake-like root curled itself around the unfortunate rodent's neck and squeezed tight until it snapped. The limp little body was then thrown to the ground. The root retracted, rewrapping itself around the tree trunk once more, as this silvermore continued to move as one with its brethren silently through the forest. Once they'd passed through the outskirts of the woods, each silvermore paused to force a root down into the soil. Using this means of communication, the army of tree monsters then proceeded to separate and organise themselves, as if dancing to a melody that only they could hear. Whilst the bulk of them spread out to create a vast, ominous ring around the heart of Fairy Forest, a smaller number of them carried on their way, heading straight for the communal glade and the Queen's Tree Palace, which lay just beyond it. When they reached the perimeter of the centre, the Silvermores remained within the shadows of the live trees and hesitated once more to penetrate the ground with their roots. Then all but one of them proceeded to spread out to create another concentric circle around the hub of the fairy community. The final tree monster disappeared into the gloom, heading towards Queen Iris's residence. As if on cue, once they were all in position, the Silvermores buried their roots within the soil, untangled their branches and closed their eyes. Any unsuspecting creature passing by would have noticed more dead trees amongst the living than normal, but that irresponsible fairy had created quite a fire, so it wasn't that unusual, surely, for so many trees to have been damaged. This is what the guard fairies thought as they returned to their sentry posts later that evening, although not all arrived as expected. Whilst guard fairy leaf coasted through the trees, thinking about the catastrophe that had now been contained, he was plucked from the air. His yell of fear became no more than a strangled gurgle as a sinewy root entered his mouth to still his tongue. Then, whilst another root coiled around his body, squeezing tighter and tighter, more roots pierced his eyes and ears to probe painfully into his brain. As his life was drained to the last drop, so too were all of his memories, thoughts and secrets. Having no further use for his body, the Silvermore discarded it nearby and placed brittle undergrowth over it to conceal it from sight. Then the Silvermore resumed its original position. A seemingly poor, unfortunate dead tree, victim of the fire, nestled close to those that had survived. Oh my 
Goodness me. I didn't think, think things could get any worse, did you? Well, let's hold out hope for chapter eight. Although it's a little distressing, it's also very exciting. So I hope you've enjoyed that and I'll see you very soon.